Welcome to module eight of our financial accounting class. In this module, we learn all about depreciation. And you might be saying to yourself, well, wait a minute, we did this already. We did this in module three, all right? We talked about all of our adjustments and depreciation was one of them. Well, uh, good news and bad news. The good news is, yes, we've already touched on depreciation. And if you remember your uh, uh, notes on depreciation from from module three, you've got a head start here. You probably have a decent understanding of straight line depreciation. In this module, we're going to introduce two more depreciation types. We're going to examine uh, units of production depreciation, and we'll also examine double declining balance depreciation. So you've learned the easiest of the three. And in fact, there's a couple extra wrinkles we're going to throw in this module. Uh, but we've got two more methods to learn. Just to give you a brief overview before we get into it, straight line depreciation is kind of like the name sounds. You figure out, okay, I buy a $25,000 car. I think it's going to last me five years. I go 25,000 divided by five. That's $5,000 a year. And I take 5,000 depreciation in year one, 5,000 in year two, 5,000 in year two, three, 5,000 in year four. Units of production is quite different from that. Units of production, when we buy a car, we say, how far will this car drive? How many kilometers will this car drive? So let's just say it's a $25,000 car, and we think, for sake of easy math, it'll drive 25,000 kilometers. We go, okay, well, that's a buck a kilometer, right? 25,000 kilometers divided by 25, or $25,000 divided by 25,000 kilometers, that's $1 per kilometer. So let's depreciate it at that rate. So if I drive 100 kilometers, it depreciates $100. If I drive 1,000 kilometers, it depreciates $1,000, and so on. So units of production says it doesn't matter time going by. It doesn't, you know, our assets don't amortize evenly over time or depreciate evenly over time. They depreciate based on usage. The more I use it, the more I need to depreciate it. The less I use it, use it the less I depreciate it. The final method that we'll introduce this module is called double declining balance. And when we look at double declining balance uh, depreciation, what we're going to find is something called an accelerated depreciation method. There's a famous um, uh, saying when you buy a car, and that is the car loses most of its value when as soon as you drive it off the lot. It loses a big chunk of value because it goes from being a new car to a used car. Right. Uh, and so double declining balance sort of says, look, assets depreciate, don't depreciate evenly over time and they don't even depreciate based on use. They lose value more quickly in the early years and slower in the later years. So we actually need to double the speed of our amortization to make it amortize more or depreciation to make it depreciate more quickly in the early years. So we'll look at examples of all of these. I, I think a terrific example in this chapter is, is problem 8-3A and 8-3B, of course. Um, we'll also examine purchasing assets. So uh, what actually goes into the cost of an asset? That's in problem 8-1. And problem 8-4 has us exploring selling assets at a gain or loss. And that's certainly uh, a very important topic for you to understand when you learn about depreciation of our long-term assets. So that's it for our brief intro. Uh, on to the problems. Stay tuned.